Greetings, Captains. Welcome to another TFO training session. This time, we'll cover Kinemer Vortex. Let's review objectives. Initially, destroy the Borg cube guarding the conduits. Once it is down, attack both gateways. The gateways are protected by generators, which are in turn protected by transformers. Destroy the transformers and generators to make the gateways vulnerable, then destroy the gateways. During this phase, you must also prevent Borg probes from reaching the time vortex. This objective is mandatory on Elite. When the gateways are destroyed, defeat the assimilated Warbird and its attendant ships that will arrive to stop you. There is a 10 minute time limit to completing this TFO, which is mandatory on Elite. Thank you. On to risks and rewards. This TFO needs substantial coordination to play well on Elite, with all optionals and without dying. It is possible to complete in a public group, but a tank is usually needed for a deathless completion and the time limit objective creates a fairly high DPS threshold compared to the rest of Star Trek Online. If you aren't already parsing over 250k DPS in ISE, we do not recommend you attempt this TFO, especially in a public setting. The enemy threat level is moderately high, as Borg will drain shields and deal a decent amount of damage, and there are many Borg ships, though they are not as clustered as in maps like Hive or Infected. For rewards, this TFO offers a moderate amount of Omega or Fleet Marks, along with a chance for Enchained Current Pieces. Lastly, this operation's duration is variable. While it is not time-gated, there are a large number of high hit point enemies, so while we could complete it in under 5 minutes, including the briefing, that was with at least two 1 million DPS ships, a 500k heavy tank, and two other DPS ships above 500k on ISC. Your mileage may vary. The adversaries on this operation are Borg. Borg vessels have a powerful shield drain ability, so encounters with them need to account for low shield uptime. There are generally not too many at once, but there are a substantial number of assimilators and cubes to fight, so a tank would be helpful. The key part of this mission is the second stage, where probes from both gateways need to be intercepted before they can reach the time portal. You could simply station one player on goalkeeper duty, but we find that inefficient. Instead, we generally adopt either a 3-2 or 4-1 split. In the case of a 4-1 split, we prefer to have the solo player engage probes but also attack the peripheral board structures. This player is preferably in an exotic or projectile build so that they can attack from long range without damage penalty and apply a large area of effect or damage over time abilities to wear down some of the structures without being in range. If the one or two players, the weak side players, can even partially whittle down some of the structures without neglecting probes, that will take time pressure off of the team. Lastly, in the Warbird stage, avoid approaching within 5 kilometers of Denatra's Warbird, as this will increase the likelihood of her cloaking, which slows down the map and can place time pressure on a lower DPS team. She has a substantial number of hit points. The spheres and probes that spawn in this stage will not be lined for the time portal, so you have some time to defeat them while Denatra is cloaked. Now, combat footage will be shown to illustrate the principles discussed previously. The goal of this section is not to illustrate perfect piloting, but provide an example of how to successfully complete the map, with all objectives and without dying. Kinetic builds excel in this map, as there are six unshielded, high hit point targets, and several other targets that are shielded but still have very high hit points. Your torpedoes will have plenty of time to deal damage. In the first stage, attack the central cube. Prior to the Borg update in 2024, this ship was a tactical cube, but the principle is the same even after it's been updated to a regular cube. After it's defeated, pick a side and move to it. If you're with a tank or other teammates, stay near them. If you're the solo or weak side player, we'll illustrate how to fly this map from the solo player perspective in our exotic playthrough of this TFO. It's pretty similar to how you'd fly it in a kinetic build. I like to start with the transformer, farthest from the spawn point, as that places you in better position to intercept the probes coming from the gateway. In this case, we took down the transformer and then the cube over it, but you could ignore the cube initially to focus on structures on both sides of the gateway instead. The danger of doing that is tanking two cubes and the gateway later can be a lot more incoming damage. If you have shield off lines like Tachyon net drones, use them on the cubes. Once the first transformer is down, move to the next, being careful to watch for probes attempting to escape. Just like on Infected, use a speed boost to cross the gateway quickly. Remember, this mission is on a timer, and your responsibility as a kinetic build is to knock down the big structures as quickly as possible. You will 
When the gateway becomes vulnerable, destroy it. This is a great target for torpedoes and mines, with no shields and plenty of time for torpedoes to impact it. Don't be afraid to use long cooldown abilities here, especially if the players on the other side need help or if the timer is starting to run low. Once it's gone, cross over to the other side, prepare to rinse and repeat. Again, use a speed boost if it's available. Notice that our solo player, Tilor, has already dealt with the smaller generators on the first transformer before we arrived, while also intercepting probes. Again, we focus down the cubes before turning on the gateway to make the gateway fight easier. Generally, a well-built kinetic platform should be able to focus on the transformers without targeting generators, except maybe the first one on the way in, as spreads from entwined tactical matrices and other AoE should clean up the generators. Once the second gateway is down, move back to the center of the map. Once the scimitar arrives, that is your main target, but don't be surprised if she cloaks a few times going invisible and untargetable even if you stay more than 5 kilometers away from her. While she's hidden, engage the spheres and probes, but Donatra is the focus when she returns. We're flying very capable ships, and it still takes us at least 90 seconds, so ideally you'll have more time left than that on the initial mission timer. When she engages her Thaleron Pulse, that big green cone, you will want to get clear of that area as it does deal significant damage. As we've said, try to stay more than 5 kilometers away from her as she will cloak more often if approached, but sometimes, as here, it can't be helped. Once the scimitar and accompanying ships are destroyed within the time limit, the TFO completes. Captain, if this breakdown helped you in your quest to play Stow better, please consider liking this video and subscribing to our channel. The link to the specific build used for this tutorial is in the description. For more guides and builds, check us out at www.stobetter.com.